You declare over people, all your sins are forgiven. That's a finished work. That's the bottom line. Jesus didn't ask their permission when he went to the cross. I don't know if you understand that or not or catch this, but he did not say, hey, you know what? I'm about to go be beaten and killed. It's going to be a highly unpleasant experience. I'm just curious. Is this going to count for anybody? Is anybody going to accept me if I do this? Because if, if all you guys are just going to go to hell anyway, I'm just going to save myself a whole lot of trouble. Nobody's going to take this seriously? Anybody? No? Okay, back to carpentry. Uh, you know, it's, he didn't do that. He didn't ask anybody's permission to go to the cross. He did it. He just did. There's got to be some point where they at least come into agreement with what you're doing. It's important because if they don't, they'll never fully understand what's happened to them. But what, it, what the power of grace can do, you and I can't even imagine because Jesus is on the cross. He's hanging there looking at the very people responsible for the life that's draining out of him. And he says, Father, forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. You know what he was saying? These people have no clue what they've just done. They don't even comprehend what I am doing. But Father, forgive them anyway. Forgive them anyway. Stephen releases grace in his final moment. Stephen releases this word, this incredible word, where he releases truth over people. They gnash their teeth at him. They pick up rocks. They start chunking rocks at him. And he looks and goes, he's dying. He is dying. And he gets this vision of God. He gets this vision of Jesus standing at the right hand of the Father. What is Jesus doing? He's standing. Because at first he sat down at the right hand of the Father. He sees this hero, and he stands. What is he doing at the right hand of the Father? It says he lives to make intercession for us because when the enemy comes at the Father and says, these are the facts of what they have done, Jesus says, you know what? It's under the blood because they're mine. Yeah, they're mine. They belong to me. Jesus is standing and Stephen gets this vision of Jesus and he says, last words, do not lay this sin to their charge. He releases forgiveness over these people. What is the effect of that? In that stoning, there's a young man standing there holding everybody's coats because apparently they needed to wind up to get a good shot at him. And he's standing there holding their coats, giving consent to him. His name is Saul. He becomes Paul. What would happen if with, if with apostolic authority and prophetic anointing, you walk up to somebody and say, you know what? Here's the truth. All your sins are forgiven. Not only that, but because Jesus lives in me and his spirit lives in me, I testify to you what he would say to you if he were sitting right here. I forgive you. And I declare that you are clean and that you are pure. I would follow it up with a third question. A third statement slash question. I would ask him, do you believe me? Do you believe what I've just said? If, if it's a supernatural work, then there's a miracle that's happening in their heart is something's going on inside of them where they're moving from lie to truth because the lie that they have believed is what's keeping them from a relationship with God by which you and I are saved. You understand it's the relationship issue. It's Matthew 7. Many will come in my name saying, Lord, Lord, we did all these things in your name. And he'll say, you know what? I never knew you. It's all about the relationship. Not about what you do. What that verse is saying is that Jesus is more interested in having a relationship with you than he is in you having a dynamic ministry, even if that dynamic ministry makes him look really good. Your dynamic ministry isn't going to save you. You can tap into my anointing by tapping into my principles, and you can see really cool things happen. That's what Pastor was talking about today between giftings, the difference between giftings and, and, and anointing. You can tap into my principles, and you can see cool things happen. Here's the big deal. It's relationship. Relationship means you're close to me. See, hell is not bad because it's hot. Yes, it's hot, and that's bad, but hell's not bad because it's hot. Hell is not a good place because it's an eternal separation from God. And as you see, it's the lie that has kept people in this environment, in this world. There are people living in hell because they're living in each separation from God. When you declare over a person the finished work of Christ, you are saying to them, this is what he's done for you. This is the expression of his love. You stand before God as pure because of what Jesus has done. The Father looks at you through the filter of the blood of his Son. Right now, you are pure and holy. Do you believe that? If they don't believe it, then they have still bought into a lie. You are the slave of the one you obey. They will follow that master into an eternity away from God, even though the blood of Christ has cleansed them from sin. 
it's not your forgiveness of sin that gives you access into heaven. You're already forgiven of sin. It's your acceptance of Jesus. Am I going to be a friend of God or am I just generally going to be you know, an acquaintance? Am I going to agree with what he's done or am I going to welcome him into my life to literally be an influence, a friend that sticks closer than a brother, not just that, but a lover because he calls me a bride? I never liked that term, by the way. I'm only now beginning to like that term. Uh, I know you love it, yeah. <laughs> My son came out of a Sunday school class where they were talking about being the bride of Christ. He was very disturbed. <laughs> I said, Britton, what's wrong? I don't like this, Dad. <laughs> what? You don't, you don't, you don't like that? What would it, why don't you like? I don't want to be a bride. Oh, man, son, neither do I. <laughs> Let me explain the theology behind it and how... Uh, here's the deal. He's inviting you to be a friend, not just a servant. Oh, you like friends or do you want to be a servant? I like friends. You know what? He wants you to even be closer than a friend. He wants you to know his heart. He wants you to get as close as you can get. And just when you think you've got there, it's actually more. And you'll spend your entire life discovering how close you can get to it. The last day of this conference, we're going to release, actually, we're going to probably do this on Saturday. We're going to release you guys during the afternoon to go do some uh, prophetic evangelism. And we'll talk to you about how that works, but here's the deal. Here's the big thing in your arsenal, and that is this. You are stewards of the grace of Christ. It's the great evangelistic equalizer, folks, because you don't need to know anything. <laughs> Serious. You don't need to know John 3.16. You don't have to find Romans 3.23, Romans 1.16. You don't have to know any of it. It's good to, and it'd be really nice if you did, but the fact is you don't have to know any of that to tap into his heart and say, you know what? All your sins are forgiven to express his love. You don't even have to be able to comprehend or understand or explain his love. Ephesians 3. You may know the love of Christ that passes knowledge. Huh? How can you know something that you can't know? You experience it. Absolutely right. See, my son was four. If I'd have said, son, explain love. Couldn't have done it. But that did not keep him from the experience of the fullness of my love for him. Unless you come as a child, in other words, unless you give up your right to have to explain everything and just receive the experience of the encounter with me, You tap into everything this way. The peace that passes understanding, you want to get that, you've got to give up your right to understand. You give me an answer, and on the other side of the answer will be peace. No, no, no. You receive peace first, maybe the answer will come. So you guys are going to get to go out. When you, when you run into somebody, they have arguments. Don't worry about the answers. God will give you the answers because the Holy Spirit lives in you. Be studied up in the scriptures. I love what Bobby, Bobby Connor said last night. You know, he studied the scriptures until he wore the ink off the page. Get into the word. Let the word get in you. That's great. But in order to lead somebody to Christ, you've got to have an encounter with the Holy Spirit. You've got to be able to lead other people into it. You can't give away what you don't have. You have that encounter with God. You, turn, you recognize the grace of God has come to you. Freely you've received. Freely give. See, everything that Jesus did in this life, in his physical body, everything that he did, he invited a person to do. Walk on water, Peter, check, done. Yeah, he didn't do it very well. But for a while, he forgot how much surface tension water ought to be able to hold. He looks at Jesus and goes, if it's you, tell me to come. Why did he do that? Because he understood this, that when Jesus speaks, things change. And if he tells me to come, in the command is the ability to achieve it. In the declaration is the ability to achieve the impossible. What's the declaration that Jesus made over the disciples? Finish it all up. He said, go into all the worlds, make in all the world, make disciples of all nations. Teach them to observe all that I've commanded you. 
every mandate he gave the disciples is meant for you and I. It doesn't stop with them. You have the capacity to release forgiveness of sin. You say, well, what about like the walking through the walls thing and appearing in the middle of the room? Does that happen? Sure, Philip. He skipped entire zip codes. I need to be here and minister to this guy. I need to meet in that town over there. There's a big distance between here and there, and I'm going to be late for that meeting. Hmm. Zap. Shazam. He's there. How does that work? I have no earthly idea. But let me tell you something. When, when you begin to, to recognize that laws of nature are actually misnamed, but who declared them to be laws? Jesus creates the law of gravity and then treats it like it's an option. Press into this thing. Listen, you're not limited by laws of nature. A storm interrupted Jesus' nap. He gets up, calms it, looks at him and goes, why don't you have any faith? Isn't that a weird thing? <laughs> because the law of nature will bend to the law of faith. I've mean, I got to tell you, I've been seeing this happen lately. My kids are tapping into stuff that is so weird they're challenging laws of nature. <laughs> Aren't they? You saw it happen too, didn't you? <laughs> oh, maybe we'll get into that later. I don't know. My, my, we have a river that runs behind our house. My daughter comes back often with, with wet feet. What are you doing? I was down there, and Jesus was there, and the angels were there, and I thought, since he was here, and there was just so much love, and I was feeling his presence, I just decided to see if I could just walk on the water with him. She's totally not discouraged. She's going to keep trying until she does it. And she will. These kids are going after some stuff. I'm telling you, it's blowing my mind. It's blowing my mind. The stuff these kids are doing is freaking me out. Oh, I want to talk about it, but I don't think I will today. Okay, we'll do it tomorrow. Uh, here's, here's what I'm getting. Some of you have people in your life, whether they be coworkers, whether they be um, family members or whatever, and you think that they're so far away from the grace of God, it would take an absolute miracle for these people to come to Christ. Almost like, it, 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 that's everybody in here. that it would take an absolute miracle for this person to come to the Lord. I'll tell you one last story. We had this guy over in Maui. His name was Frank. Oh, we, we didn't have him. He sort of had himself, and the enemy had him. And He was a philosophy professor from a, a West Coast university, and um, he was far more intelligent than we were, and uh, very, very, very sharp, a lot of fun to talk to, but this guy was not going to accept Christ for nothing. No way, no how. We, we took the new people and we set them on Frank because Frank would just chew people up, meet them out. I mean, it's been around. It's just, and uh, take all these new guys and be like, hey, go give a word to Frank. <laughs> so um, I think we figured, you know, that if we, if we uh, polished our arguments up well enough, that eventually that we would come up with the argument that Frank could not refute and he would eventually go, oh, wow, that's, I got nothing for that. Okay, I accept Jesus, I give. Never happened. And um, at least not like that. And we were talking one day about the compassion of heaven, recognizing that when God begins to stir compassion in you, that's the same thing that the Father used to communicate to the Son what he wanted to do, which is why you see over and over again in the Scriptures, Jesus moved with compassion, touched him and healed him. Jesus moved with compassion, does such and such, right? So we started recognizing that when God begins to highlight somebody to us and we feel that pure, that agape love for this person, just, wow, I just... I feel like I'm falling out in love with a stranger here. This is just like, whoa, what's the deal? That you're really tapping into his heart for that person, and when you minister from that place, it melts every wall of defense. And so uh, we're sitting there with Frank one day, and Frank and I are sitting there on the beach, and I felt this just overwhelming compassion for Frank. And I just looked over at him and said, Frank, all your sins are forgiven. Huh? Yeah, they are. I don't know if you know, but 2,000 years ago, Jesus died once for all. That means you, just like me, just like him, all of your sins are forgiven because of what Christ has done. When the Father looks at you, he looks at you through the filter of the blood of his Son. 
right now, I just declare over you that you are pure and that you stand before God as clean and you stand before God as holy. That everything that you have done, that you have claimed as a false identity because of a sin or an action in your life is a lie because it's not who you are. I said some other things. And I didn't really pay a whole lot of attention until I looked over and Frank was crying. And right there, he accepted Christ. And we got done and I thought, that was easy. <laughs> See, here's the deal. Here's where the sinner's prayer complicates things a little bit. And this is why I think we're moving from, from, from an inferior realm to a superior realm in God as the supernatural, as the spiritual becomes open back up to the body of Christ. Anything that I give you to do that produces an effect or a result in the kingdom means that you came by it because of something you did. When I declare something over you that begins in your heart, that you come into agreement with in here, and you realize that it has happened before you, like, it's like taking a new breath when you've had obstructed lungs all your life, and you're, see, that's grace. This came to me not because of what I've done, and now everything I do is a response of all that he did. It's never then again about works. We love him because he first loved us. <sighs> Put your hand on your heart. God, I pray today for a supernatural impartation of your heart. God, give us your heart today for people. God, I pray that today that every person in here Names the name of Jesus, filled with your spirit, would recognize that they steward not, not just your spirit, not just your presence and your power, but your love and your grace. That from this point on, that every person in this room would be a well of grace that never runs dry. That never runs dry. See, Jesus didn't make sinners feel good in their sin. He recognized past their sin who they really were and regarded them according to their identity. And because of that, they loved him. They loved him. The person that has the greatest influence in the days to come will be the person that offers the greatest hope the real, the genuine hope, Christ in you, the hope of glory. He's better than you think. He's better than you think. Can I tell you this? You cannot exaggerate the goodness of God. You cannot imagine him better than he is. You won't be able to stand before him and go, I thought you, you know, I, I thought you loved more than that. I thought you were better. You cannot, in your created mind, mind created by him, who is love, cannot imagine him to be more love than he actually is. Just let that rock you. That is the God who lives in you. So Lord, flood us today with a supernatural revelation of your goodness and cause your church to shine, cause us to shine, cause us to glow, to glow. Mm. Yeah. All right, stand up with me. I want everybody to pair up with somebody in the room. Here's going to be our activation here. I want everybody to pair up with somebody in the room. If you came with uh, your spouse, find that person. If you didn't, find somebody else. Pair up. I want you to turn and face them, all right? Kind of nice to know their name. All right, now here's the way this is going to work. This is going to be a lab, okay? Older person is going to minister to the younger person. So real quick, find out who that is. Everybody close your eyes for just a second. Older person, I'm going to ask you to do something just a second. When I say go, I'm going to have you both open your eyes. I'm going to have you just, and an older person, I'm going to have you just make a declaration over them. I want you to just declare over them all your sins are forgiven. But here's the deal, you got to know it. You got to know it. You believe 2,000 years ago Jesus died once for all. That they are just as forgiven as you because that's what you're saying. When you make that declaration over them, you are releasing truth, not just a fact. All right? When I say go, I want you to open your eyes. Both of you, I want you to look at each other. An older person, I want you just to make a declaration over them all 
of your sins are forgiven. Ready? Go. Come on. All right. <clears throat> All right. Everybody close your eyes one more time. Now, older person, here's what I'm going to have you do. I'm going to ask you to make another declaration over them. And uh, here's the wording I want you to use. Because his spirit lives in me, I declare to you, I forgive you. Now, here's what you're saying. You are saying in this declaration, from this point on, I disqualify myself from ever treating you any other way than Jesus Christ himself actually would treat you. If you are willing to do that, when I say go, I want you to open your eyes, look at this person, and I want you to say, because his spirit lives in me, I say to you, I forgive you. Ready? Go. All right. <clears throat> Younger person, shut your eyes for just a second. One more, one more step. Last step. This is the most important step of all. Declaration has been made. Declaration has been made. Ownership has been taken of this process. All that's left is for your agreement. Younger person, keep your eyes closed. Older person, I want you to just reach over and put a hand on their shoulder, and I just want you to quietly begin to pray for them, just silent. Again, this is just an exercise, but I think today it's going to be more than an exercise because there's some of you in here that, uh, listen, uh, wow. I'm getting the sense that there's some of you in here, a uh, young, younger person, who have, you're th it's almost like you're thinking right now of all of the stuff that you have done that has displeased your father's heart between the time you accepted Christ and this moment right now. And uh, I'm getting this picture. It's like it's done one of two things to you. It's either caused you to disqualify yourself from service to God and greater experiences and the more that your heart cries out for, it's, it's caused you to step back from those encounters, those deep encounters with God. Or some of you, there's at least a half dozen people in here, you've thrown yourself headlong into Christian service sort of as a way to offset the issues in your life that you can't seem to overcome. As if if I just like overcome this through works and service, it'll count. Today we're declaring freedom over you, no matter whether you're a prisoner or a captive or both. We're making a declaration of freedom, the finished work of Christ over you. All right, older person, in just a second, I'm going to have you, when I say go, I'm going to have you ask them a question, and the question is this, do you believe me? Younger person, I don't want you to answer until you can say the answer from the core of your spirit. When you say yes, what you're saying is this, I believe that the blood of Christ was sufficient to cause me to step into a place of righteousness, holiness, that I stand before God as pure, right, now. So older person, when I say go, I want you to ask him, do you believe me? Younger person, answer according to what you are agreeing with. Ready? Go. Come on. Does any person in here have pain in their body? Check it. Because <laughs> when you release grace, <laughs> healing has a way of coming along for the ride. <laughs> Anybody have a pain that you came in with that's gone now? One, two, three, four, five. My goodness. Come on. Somebody shout. Look at this. Woo. Oh, my goodness. What do you recognize it's gotten hot in here? Come, Holy Spirit, more.
Wow. I'll tell you one last thing. I'll let you go. A couple weeks ago, I got a phone call. I got a phone call from a young man. We were in a meeting, and I, and I gave this word, the same message. Uh, I don't know if I've ever given it quite this thoroughly, though, man. You guys are just so hungry. It's just so fun to, to, to speak to you guys. I got a phone call from this young man. I gave him my, my phone number, and uh, he said, uh, when, you, when you release that, he says, you know, the funny thing is, he says, I said yes. He says, I was, I was the younger person in the, in the activation. He says, and I said yes. And we said, when I said, when I said yes, um, he said, I was thinking specifically of a particular addiction that I had struggled with for years. So about every 24 to 48 hours, I'd be stuck in this addiction. He says, and, and it's just, he says, it was something I just could never get loose from. He says, and I knew that Jesus, you know, had saved me and, and everything. He says, I just could not seem to beat this. He said, so I would just proclaim, God, I just, I receive your grace. I, I know I'm a sinner saved by grace, and I just receive your grace. And he says, and he says about four, he says, I thought maybe that, that yes would break it, break its hold off of me. So about 48 hours later, he says, I find myself in this same addiction again. He says, and there I am. He says, and I'm right in the middle of this. And he says, and it's just, it feels so dark and it feels so heavy. He said, in the middle of that darkness and heaviness, he said, I heard the voice of the Holy Spirit speak to me and said, do you believe you're forgiven now? And he said, Pff. he said, my answer initially was, no, of course not. And he said, the question came again, do you believe you're forgiven now? And he said, and I stopped and thought about it. And he said, and then he followed it up with this. He says, I can clean you faster than you can mess yourself up. You catch this? He said, when I realized, and check this out, so it's going to blow some of your theology a little bit, but listen, this, this tripped me out. But I tell you what, I was overdone, 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 undone, overwhelmed, underwhelmed, innerwhelmed by the goodness of God when he said this. <laughs> he said, when I realized that because of what Jesus did, even in the middle of my addiction and issue that I had adopted as a part of my identity, that I was actually forgiven in the middle of this. He said the bondage was broken. He said when I realized that I was forgiven, that his grace literally overcame this action. He said the bondage of the action was broken. He says now it's been a couple of months. I haven't struggled with it at all. It's like it was completely broken. So I want you to turn make one last declaration over one another, both directions. You are free. Hug that person. Embrace them. Woo! Yeah! Yeah! Woo! Come on. Come on. Ha-ha! <laughs>